and said, I am doing this because the Lord has appointed you to be ruler over Israel, his special possession. Verse 2, when you live here, when you leave me today, you will see two men besides Rachel's home at Delva on the border of Benjamin. They will tell you that the donkeys have been found and that the father has stopped worrying about them and is now worrying about you. He is asking, have you seen my son? Verse 3, when you get to the top of the temple, you will see three, you will see three men coming towards you who are on their way to worship God. One will be bringing three young goats. Another has three loaves of bread. And the third will be bring, will be carrying a wine skin full of wine. Verse 4. They will greet you and offer you two loaves of bread. Take note of that. Which you are to accept. When you are a healer of God, the healer of God, you uh, King James said, when you arrive at the hill of God, where the benefit of the Philistine is located, you will meet a band of prophets coming down from the place of worship. They will be playing a harp, covering a flute and lyre, and they will, they will be prophesying. At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you powerfully, and you will prophesy with them. You will be changed in different that. You will be changed into a different person. Verse 7. After this time, do what must be done. For God is with you. Somebody say amen. Amen. For God is with you. Amen. Now, just a story that I'm following what we've read. What happened here? Saul has been anointed by Saul. Now, before this time, the nation of Israel had no king. Before this time, the nation of Israel, they had no king. Their king is God. Remember, this is a nation that has left Egypt. This is a nation that has suffered 430 good years of slavery. So they have left Egypt through this desert, through the journey, and now become a nation of Israel. So they had no king. And the reason why they don't have a king is because God wants to be their king. God wants to be their king. God wants to God wants to, God wants to be their king so that he can be, they can be God's people. If you read Judges, Judges chapter 21, verse 25, you will see the Bible said the, 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 the nation of Israel has no king. And that is why everybody do what they like. What they feel is right. Everybody do it. And I know that when everybody do things they like, there will be a state of chaos. When everybody do things they feel right, just like the world is tending towards now, whatever that feels right, is what is right. Right is the place. Praise God. That is why the world is tending to. It was a state of confusion. So the children of Israel said, No, we want a king. And God said, No, I am your king. Just follow me and listen to me. When you follow me and follow my guidelines, then I'll become your people. They rejected God. And when they rejected God, God said, Okay, because God is not a democratic God. He's not a God that forces himself to you. He said, Okay, I will give you a king. And that was how he instructed Samuel to go and anoint. The first king in the land of Israel. So that was the beginning of it to that point. So let us look at the spirit of work of prayer. Immediately, Saul was anointed. One of the things I learned while reading and trying to you know, get the word of God out of this passage, one of the things after the anointing of God upon Saul to become the king of Israel. Something happened. Instructions follow the king. Instructions follow the anointing. Praise God. Immediately, someone began to instruct 
So, on what to do. In verse, in verse 2, he said, when you have a when you have divided from me today, you will find two men by Rachel's stone in the territory of Benjamin. In other words, when you are leaving me, I want you to go through this direction. The direction where you will find Rachel too. Why was that? When I was reading, I discovered that Rachel, you remember the story of Rachel? Rachel is, Rachel is the wife of Jacob. Why they would left where they were and were told in truth, the Bible noted after truth in Egypt and Africa, that Rachel was pregnant. Remember, Rachel is the mother of Joseph, his her second son. She was pregnant of her second son. And in the course of her pregnancy, it was a hard labor pregnancy. And in the course of giving birth, she died. Why she died? Why dying? She called this child Ben Oni. And the meaning of Ben Oni is the child of my soul. Or the child that will carry my soul. This is a dying mother seeing a child born. Not because she said that that child will stop her or, or anything. But she, she's imagining that this child is going to be without the mother. She will not, he will not be able to stop my breath. I will not be able to be there to birth her, to take care of him, and to do all mothers needed to do. He looked at the child and said, you carry my soul. The mommy. The fact of when the father came, Jacob came, and opened, lo and behold, the love of his life was down. Having brought to birth, the wonderful child. He said, no, his name will not be coming so. No, his name will not be Benjamin. Rather, will be Benjamin. Meaning, the child of my strength. May God, the word God has called you, the name God has given you, may you be that name in the name of Jesus Christ. He's come. My sorrow, the father said, No, you'll be the child of my strength, the son of my strength. So, remember, I'm just trying to trace for us why someone had to tell Saul to go to the tomb where Rachel was buried. No, Rachel cried and suffered and died in sorrow. And the only thing she was living on earth is a son of God. But the father changed the name. So as long as Rachel understands life is about her soul, what she felt, what she thought, what she felt. But God is a God that has the ability and the power to change our soul to something beautiful. Now, many years later, a first thing, the first thing. In the nation of Israel was anointed. When I was reading the pattern of Saul, actually Saul was the Benjamites. You know when the tribe of Israel, Israel is made up of 12 tribes, and these 12 tribes are the sons of Jacob. So this land of Jacob with Benjamin who went or came through Saul, God wants to restore and tell Rachel. It's not all about sorrow. Your seed you brought forth has become the first thing of the nation. So that is why Samuel said, So when you go know it, please go to the top of it. So that why we did like that? She will understand the son to get better. The grandson to get better is now the king, the king of it. So that she will find the joy in her heart that life is not all about sorrow. There is a point where you will arrest in your life and it will turn things around. And that is that same God will start with it. No matter the amount of sorrow we carry, no matter the amount of sorrow we turn with our life, God has the ability to turn things around and give you joy. And I know that God is giving some of the joy today in the name of Jesus. So, yes, we know that I know Rachel would have been lying down there. 
So glory be to God that I did not terminate this child. Glory be to God that I let this child come. My soul has the right way. My son has become the first king of the nation of Israel. What an honor. What an honor. Glory be to God. Honor be to God. I can imagine great praising God and appreciating God for restoring God in our soul. I pray that God will restore you in every dimension in the name of Jesus. And that is the message of God. And do you know what? So for it. So for it. In verse 3, verse 3 of the scripture where we read, he said, Then you shall go forward. That is the second instruction. Then you shall go forward from there and come to Cambridge. And then when you come there, you will see three of Cambridge. There are three men going to, to God and better, better here in the house of God. So these three men are going to better, and you will meet, they will meet with you. One will carry three young goats, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. Very strong. And they will greet you and give you two loaves. And I say, Lord, what is the significance of these two loaves? They have three. They have Goats. Why not give three goats? Why not give three others? They gave only two loaves. And that signified that Saul will be the king of two kingdoms the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. And remember, someone who made the king to accept it. If you don't ask, if you reject it, then you'll be rejected as the king of Israel. So when the king took this, this full of accept it. And when they gave it, that is when he received the position, the option to become the king of Judah and the king of Jerusalem, the king of Israel. Somebody say amen. He received that honor at that point, and he carried on, and he moved on, and he reigned as the king of Israel. In verse 5, verse 5 of the 10th century, right, say, after that, when he has received it, means he has received the kingdom of Judah and kingdom of Israel. Why? Because God thinks kingdom. When God looks at you and I, he looks kingdom. He thinks kingdom. What is kingdom? Kingdom is king's domain. Kingdom means king's domain. Hallelujah. Remember when they left Egypt, these are people that 100 years of slavery has changed their mentality. They no longer understand who they are. They no longer understand the God they serve. They no longer understand anything. So God was trying to inform and teach them to understand about kingdom. And that is why he let me be your king. Let me be let me direct you. God is God that takes kingdom, king's domain. No wonder in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, Come, let's make man in our own image that they might have dominion. So God has made man a king that will have dominion, place of influence. Hallelujah. So when God looks at us, when God talks, he talks about kingdom, kings of men. And as Bible talks, that you are king, God king. According to our Lord Jesus Christ, who will be made king and priest. It's only the pastor that are priest that has made everything in this dispensation, in this, in, in this grace, in this dispensation of grace, we are kings and priests. Hallelujah. So that's why I've given you your own kingdom to exercise authority. Somebody say amen. Then in verse 5, after that, another instruction, he obeyed and went in that direction. And now, when he thought, when, when they gave him two loads, he accepted it. Accepted it. The third instruction he said, after that, you shall come to a you shall come to the hill of God. Verse 5. Where the garrison is. After that, you shall come to the hill of God. Another translation says they call it a tambourine where where 
God's presence came. After that, you will come to the garrison of God. And when, when you come there, in that very place, the Philistines speak their tents. And I ask, why would this time the only challenge the nation Israel has is the Philistines? And this time, the only challenge, the only people looking to kill them or destroy them is the nation Philistines. So why is that the heat of God, the place of God, that is where they are teaching their tents? Where is that? For me, the heat of God is a place where you come to pray, to worship, and to praise God. That is the heat of God. Place where you come to pray. Place where you come to worship God. Place where you come to meet with God. Why is it so gracious in your Christmas and where is that place to be in your hands? Why? I have some said why. And the Holy Spirit tells you it is the place of prayer and the place of worship and the place of communion with God. That you face your enemies. You meet your enemies in the place of pain. You meet your enemies in the place of worship. You meet your enemies in the place where you commit with God. And it's in that very place God grants you victory. Hallelujah. Amen. So that tells me the heat of God, where I pray, where I worship, is a sacred place. It's a precious place. And the enemy is waiting for you there. The good thing is in that very place, God has signed your victory. Amen. In that very place, God has stopped your victory. So here, the children of Israel, some are saying so. I still go, I still journey to this place. I feel like you shall come, you shall come to the heel of God. We will see that the spirit of the tent. And it will happen when you have come there. To the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place, coming down from the high place with string, with instrument, with tambourine, with flute, with harp before them, and they will begin to approach. So you can see it's already a place of prayer, it's a place of worship. When you meet them there, say they will begin to prophesy. And the beautiful thing. When he met them, as they began to prophesy, in verse 6, he said, as they began to prophesy, that the Spirit of God will come upon you, Lord, and you will prophesy with them, and you will, you will become another man. Another translation says, you will be changed. Brothers and sisters, it is the place of worship. It is the place of prayer. While you worship, the Spirit of God comes to and when the Spirit of God comes upon you, things change. Hear this. What makes a difference in people's life is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, they are prophesying that the Spirit of God will come upon you. And that, from that day, you will change. Give me please. Acts chapter 2. The Spirit of God comes upon Saul that day and everything about Saul changes. As a believer, as a child of God, what makes the difference between people who go to church for whatever reason and people who indeed have relationship with God in the Holy Spirit? The difference between any other reason why people go to church and the genuine, the genuine People who God has taught is the Spirit. No one that Jesus Christ told his disciples, you are listening, hear this. Don't go anywhere, don't move anywhere, don't do anything. Don't stay as you stay for as long as it is, just wait for the Spirit to come. Because the Spirit makes the difference. The Spirit is the thing that changes things. The Spirit of God is what changes you and you become like no one. So the Bible said he changed him because of the That same spirit is what the Bible talks about in Acts of Apostles, chapter 2. He said, when the day of Pentecost had put up, they were all in that world in one place, and suddenly they came aside. 
from heaven. I saw the one who went away. He filled the whole house. We are the people feared to them divided thoughts. Can you go to verse 14 to 17? Hallelujah. So the spirit of God, heaven, that spirit of God is the promise of the past. It's a promise of all of God. It's not just for them in the Bible. It's not just for so because it's invited. It's not just for them. It's for all of God. Many years after Jesus has come, and as they gathered there, pray, that same spirit came. And in verse 14, but Peter stood with the inevitable raised voice and said to them, Men of Jerusalem, men of Judah, all who dwell in Jerusalem, let me come to you and hear my voice, for these are not brought as you saw. Sin is only the cause out of the day. Because people were really thinking that God, anytime the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you look like somebody who has been praying. We see the drunk hat. Mm -hmm. I used to somebody who is drunk on alcohol. He talks. He laughs when he doesn't need to laugh. Praise God. Amen. When the Holy Spirit is upon you, you will begin to prophesy. Begin to speak the word of God. You begin to enjoy the presence of God like never before. And Bible says, and Peter was the drunk. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And he said, and it shall come to pass. In the last day, say God, the spirit will be born and all the spirit and all the earth. Your son, your daughter shall prophesy. And that is why I tell you, all believers, if you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, that have his evidence in this false spirit, because that is what changes you. That is what takes you out of religion. Hallelujah. It's not just part of the usual, usual church going religion. This is the difference, the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is what makes the difference. And when it's upon you, when it's upon you, the Bible says it changes you. It is a promise of the Father for every one of us. It's not for the people. It's a promise for sons and daughters of the kingdom. So if you're here, you don't have to go. You will be stuck on your stomach. It's for you. How do you get it? You get it by obeying the instruction. Jesus told them, go nowhere. Don't stay. Stay to wait for it. So as the child of God, what do you do? You go in and ask the Holy Spirit. Before I was baptized the Holy Spirit, I heard it, I heard the teaching, and I converted. I asked Lord, I want my own. I desired it. It didn't come the first day. It didn't come the first month. But eventually came because I was waiting for it. Eventually came because I was prepared for it. I said, Lord, you said it's for sons and daughter. Am I a son? I can see that I am a son. He said it's for sons and daughter. Professor, many years before I was born. Give me my heart. And in the place of prayer, I was committed, dedicated, waiting for it. Waiting for it. Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. I was waiting for it so that you can come on. Yes. If you don't have this spirit, this is the same spirit that makes it for after five years. They no longer believe. After three years, they pack up because initially they didn't get this spirit. This is the spirit that will sustain you. This is the spirit that will take you to. Trials in trials in this time. This is the spirit that will keep you going. This is the spirit that when they say you kill because of faith, you say no problem. As long as I have Jesus, I'm okay. This is the spirit that will keep you going. And you need it. We need it. Everybody needs it. I say, thank God, if you want to make it to the end, if you want to run this faith, and get to the end. You need this Holy Spirit to help you. Because when it falls upon you, when you receive, it changes everything about you. Peter was here. The disciples, they were weak, not bold, 
Now, when this upon them, they were changed man. God gave them power. God gave them options. God gave them options. The child of God in this church, you live the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, you change everything. You give you the energy to run. You give you the strength to run to the end. You give you the strength not to give up, no matter what you think. The apostles, the disciples, they never gave up until they faced death. When they were challenged to be king, they never gave up. They were still confessed and professed their faith in the death. No one that went to church, Peter was about to die, and they wanted to sign that they crucified him. He said, No, please don't crucify me like my master. Who signed me? Sign down his step. He was still professing Christ in a white time. Was still, still prophesying his faith. Why? Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. When this comes up, it will change. It will change everything about you. It will give you energy to walk. It will give you strength to move. It will give you boldness to stand. Do God. So we need the strength. We need the strength. Do you know the one who said, Sexually? The promise of From the scripture where we have been, verse 9 to 11. See, verse 9 to 11. First, verse 9 to 11. While I close. So it was when he had turned back to go from somewhere that God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. So as Samuel received that story, something changed. God gave him another heart. He and his brothers, when he come to God, one of the things he came with God. God gave him another heart. By the reason of the spirit he received, by the reason of the baptism of the spirit, God gave him another heart. It's that they changed his heart. I pray. Anyone that he may change in the heart, you will receive a people that will change your heart to the end. May God give you another heart to the name of Jesus. May God give us another heart to the name of Jesus. Next time, when they came here to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the Spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied among them. And so, so began to Side in the The Spirit of God came upon him and he began to prophesy. And look at that. One he prophesied in verse 11. Said, and he had, it had happened when all who knew him formerly, all who knew him so formerly, saw that he indeed prophesied among the prophets that the people said to one another, What is this that has come upon the Son of God? Is so also among the prophets. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, when the Spirit of God comes upon your life, it changes things in your life and you become a wonder. So, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, when the Spirit of God comes into your life, it changes things in your life. You know this? Emmanuel, I used to know. I not say hallelujah. He's the one casting out demons now. He did not, as then I used to know, that used to run about everywhere, and he is a demon who goes. He's the one that comes fire from heaven. He's the one that heals them that are sick. Men will wonder with what God will do with you. Amen. Men will wonder because God will come to step into you and become little in the hand of God. The leg of God, the voice of God, every time you will be of God, the voice of the super Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you become a wonder. May you be a wonder in the name of the Amen. Spirit. Amen. May God do great things with you in the name of Jesus. May God do great things with us in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God brings pain. That marvelous generation. May God bring change in our life that will marvel our generation. Because this generation, they look and appear too worldwide. 
that they need some wonder from God so that they can know of the power and the greatness of God whom we serve. That's an only when you and I open up for him. That can only happen when you and I open up for God to let but when he comes, he changes things. When he comes, he turns things around. When he comes, then you become a wonder. Yeah, yeah. Is this one now among the prophets? Is this one now among the gods? Is this one now being used by God? Yeah. May God do this in this day. Yeah. May God do something in this generation. In the name of Jesus. May God be used. Do great and mighty things yeah, yeah. in the name of Jesus. I speak of every one of us. Change the Holy Spirit is coming to you. Change by the Holy Spirit is coming to my life. Change by the Holy Spirit is coming to our church. Change by the Holy Spirit is coming to you. In the name of Jesus. So we open up to our life in this prayer. We will do what we want to work. When the world looks up, they will say, This works has for some and wonders. Amen. Yeah. Hey. 